This is F9, one of the official campaign tracks in Trackmania Nation's Esports World Cup, a competitive Formula racing game released in 2006. The timeline of Trackmania games can get a little confusing, but this game was Nadeo's first big international hit. Trackmania Nation's Esports World Cup featured online multiplayer, in-game track building and replay editing tools, and even global ranking leaderboards all for free which was a rare thing 15 years ago. The game attracted millions of players to take to the international stadium and try their hands at racing for the fastest records. Two years later, in 2008, Nadeo would polish the game even further and re-release it as the now infamous Trackmania Nations Forever. Trackmania Nations Esports World Cup and Trackmania Nations Forever are almost identical, featuring very similar physics and graphics. The biggest difference between them is the campaign tracks in each game. Trackmania Nations Forever has a campaign of 65 tracks, but Nations Esports World Cup has a campaign of 121 tracks, and one of these tracks is F9, where for the last 15 years, players have battled to hold a world record. The objective in any Trackmania game is to drive as fast as you possibly can to the finish line, and compete for the top records on the leaderboards so it's essentially made for speedrunning competition. There are individual leaderboards for each track in the game, and on every leaderboard, thousands of players have attempted to become the best over the years. But F9 stands out as a particularly interesting track. It has such an incredibly rich history of innovation and improvement, because on this track, there are seemingly no limits to how far players are willing to go in order to win. Welcome to the world record history of Trackmania's F9. Let's start by taking a look at the track. The route on F9 is pretty simple, consisting of only left turns and jumps that goes round and round in a spiral with increasingly higher speeds. The formula for going fast on this track is having good speed management, maximizing how much speed you're able to carry into each jump, through each turn, and after every landing. If you go a little bit too fast, you'll launch right off the track. And if you slow down too much, well, you won't get a very fast time. Already in the early days, the top players were tethering right at the edge of this limit, and trying to push the track record as low as they could. The first record ever uploaded to the leaderboards was a 4608, set by the player Iron Dragons, driven on the 27th of January 2006 the same day as the game released. But this run was far from optimized. On the release day, the world record would be improved 5 more times, down to a 4479, driven by the player Petitcon. Over the following 2 weeks, the record would continue to drop lower and lower. On the 7th of February 2006, the player Sinon achieved a time of 4329. This was a really strong record, considering it was driven one and a half decades ago. Sinon's run had no big visible flaws. He had good racing lines and great speed management on every jump, maintaining a lot of momentum after each landing, and setting a very tough benchmark to beat for anyone who wanted the F9 record. But sadly for Sinon, the record wouldn't stand for as long as it probably should have, because only three months later, the player Kari would take to the track, and achieve a 4306, using a new trick. That trick was to air brake. On every single jump, Kari tapped the brake mid-air, which for whatever reason stops your car's rotation, and it allowed Kari to land perfectly flat on every jump, building up much more speed throughout the race. It's hard to imagine a time where the air brake was a revolutionary technique in Trackmania as it now stands as one of the most fundamental tricks we know. But players back in 2006 didn't have any guides or tutorials to go off of. They had to figure this out on their own. And Kari managed to use the air brakes on F9 to great effect, beating the world record by 23 hundredths of a second. Kari wasn't done yet though. He really liked the track F9, claiming it as his favorite in the campaign. And over the course of the year 2006, he improved his own world record 4 more times, down to a 4253, doing the same strategy but with more refined racing lines. 
Throughout 2007, the record was improved a bit further by players like Marvin, DLG, Jerry and Chinran. But it wasn't until March of 2008 that F9 would get its first truly strong world record, when Jerry achieved a 42-31. Even for today's standards, this is a great time, and it was driven 13 years ago. Jerry had impeccable speed on every jump on the track. It should be noted that in the old Trackmania games, you cannot afford to land on the grey border of the track, known as the Ramstein border. If you do, you'll get a so-called landing bug, where there's a high probability of flipping upside down or losing all your speed. And Jerry was cutting each jump extremely close to the border, taking the tightest possible lines. And he beat the old world record by six hundreds of a second. In April of 2008, one month after Jerry's record, Nadeo would release their brand new, more polished Trackmania game, Trackmania Nations Forever, and most of the player base moved over to try it out. The community at the time got the idea to recreate the campaign tracks from Nations ESWC in Nations Forever, so that they could keep competing for the records on them in the new version. And this idea is what gave birth to the TMN Race campaign. The TMN Race campaign is a complete remake of the original ESWC campaign tracks, made in Trackmania Nations Forever. The idea of the campaign was to keep the track route the exact same, while giving the tracks a fresh look with the new decoration blocks that were introduced in Trackmania Nations Forever. And it was here on TMN Race F9 that the competition for the record would continue. But it got off to a bit of a slow start. After the TMN Race campaign released, the player Baron would quickly achieve a 42 second run on TMN Race F9, but nobody could get close to the 4231 achieved on the original track by Jerry. Part of the reason why was that Nadeo had slightly altered the physics in Trackmania Nations Forever. They made the Formula car heavier, which resulted in harder impact landings, making it impossible to maintain as much speed after each jump as on the original track. This left players feeling unsatisfied, as they weren't able to match their records from the old game. Because of this, and the fact that Nations Forever now had its own campaign of 65 new tracks, neither TMN Race F9 or the original F9 saw much action. Players were simply busy competing for other records at the time. Over the next few years, Nations ESWC would see less activity as a whole, due to the game's Star Force drivers being incompatible with Windows 7. So if you had a computer with any modern operating system, you could no longer access Nations ESWC. Every now and then, there would be an occasional record improvement on TMN Race F9, with a player shaving off a few hundredths. But it would take until 2014 for the spark on F9 to be reignited. That year, the Trackmania shortcut legend Nino created a team called Fastest Way Only. Their mission? to shortcut as many official campaign tracks as possible. At its inception, the group consisted of Nino and four other very dedicated Trackmania shortcut players. The group would instantly gain notoriety and status in the community, as they were one of the first real shortcutting teams in the game. The players in the team were not only great at discovering new shortcuts, but they also had the patience and determination to grind a track together for hours on end until one of them successfully managed to pull it off. After seeing what Fastest Way Only were doing, many players wanted to join the group, and their recruitment rules were pretty straightforward. The way to get accepted into Fastest Way Only was by proving your skills, and doing a new shortcut on an official campaign track that nobody else had done before you. So naturally, whenever a new shortcut idea was shared in the community, a lot of players rushed to the track to try to be the first person to pull it off so they could become a Fastest Way Only member. In December of 2014, the player Ors discovered a potential shortcut on F9 that caught the Trackmania community's attention. You see, F9 only has two checkpoints, one placed here, after the first few jumps on the track, and the other one here, two turns later. But there were huge portions of the track that had no checkpoints at all, which meant that in theory they could be skipped. Ors' shortcut idea was to drive the first two checkpoints as normal, and then on the big jump after checkpoint 2, he would take off at full speed to the left, and skip one of the ramps. 
In order to do this, Wurst turned his car completely sideways on the jump, so he could perform a trick called the bug slide when he landed. As when you land at 90 degrees sideways and drift in Trackmania, you can do a very sharp slide while preserving your speed. You then instantly launch off the next ramp and try to land back on your wheels, while maintaining enough speed to make the final jump directly to the finish road. It was estimated that this approach could save upwards of one second if done well, which in Trackmania is a big deal. But what if there was also another shortcut that could save even more time? Because amidst the hype around the ore shortcut idea, the player error discovered a shortcut that could shave off even more time, if it were possible. His idea was to drive to the second checkpoint as normal, then make a U-turn, gather speed, and try to climb over the road border and drop directly into the finish, which clearly was the shortest path to the finish line. But was it actually possible? The biggest problem with error shortcut idea was getting enough speed to clear the gap between the road and the finish, mainly due to this booster. After doing a U-turn in the checkpoint and driving the track in reverse, the booster becomes an anti-booster that you cannot simply drive normally across. However, there is a trick in Trackmania called the anti-boost skip, whereby driving with extreme precision, it's possible to drive on the grey border in between the anti-booster and the wall without losing speed. But even if you pulled off this trick and managed to perform a good wall climb, the jump to the finish was questionable. In order to clear that gap, you needed to somehow generate more speed. Most players were convinced that it was impossible, but Error insisted that it could be done. He kept trying the idea, and on the 14th of December 2014, Error surprised everyone when he uploaded this run to the leaderboards, a 37.42, with the U-turn shortcut. At first, people were extremely hyped to see such a big shortcut being done, but when analyzing the replay file, players discovered some strange anomalies. First of all, he had a very slow start, losing almost a second to Marvin up to the first checkpoint, and then in the turn before the second checkpoint, he drifted right into the wall, seemingly without losing speed. But the most absurd part of the run was the ending, where Error drove right across the anti-boosters without losing speed. He was, in fact, gaining speed from it. Error claimed that this was a 1 in a million bug, which allowed him to gain speed from anti-boosters. And knowing how buggy Trackmania can be, it sounded somewhat believable. But after seeing the run, some players checked the replay file in the in-game validation tool, and discovered that despite the claim of a new bug, the run wasn't legitimate. The in-game validation tool checks whether or not a player's inputs matches their record. Trackmania's physics are 100% deterministic, which means that if you do the exact same steering inputs, the game will produce the exact same result. The validation tool ran a simulation of Error's inputs, and the end result it got was completely different, meaning that Error must have modified Trackmania's physics himself. The run was promptly removed from the leaderboards, and Error later admitted to using a Trackmania cheat client to achieve the run that allowed him to gain speed from driving across anti-boosters. Despite two big shortcut ideas being discovered, the real world record on TMN Race F9 was still a 4248, driven the intended way by Marvin. But how about an even crazier shortcut idea? You see, around the same time, Nino, the mastermind behind Fastest Way Only, discovered an absolutely wild shortcut approach on the track. In 2008, when the TMN race campaign was created, they used some of the new scenery blocks to give the tracks a fresh look. And as it turns out, this new scenery can be heavily exploited. More specifically, this airship. What Nino discovered is that you could take a wide line through the second checkpoint, drift and then angle your car towards the left on the jump. And then, with a very specific speed, you could land on the back of the airship and bug slide off of it to try to reach the finish road. If possible, this idea would likely save even more time than the Ors shortcut jump, but it was far more difficult. 
The weird geometry of the airship block made it very difficult to bug slide on. Most of the time you would jump on the airship, try to drift and nothing would happen. Or you'd crash right into the red fin at the back of it, instead of launching off to its side. And once in a blue moon, when you finally launched off, the distance you had to clear to land on the road looked absurd. But maybe with a phenomenal bug slide, someone could make it to the other side. TMN Race F9 now had three competing shortcut ideas. The Orse Jump, Error's Wall Climb, and Nino's Airship Nose Bug. All tethering right at the limit of what was possible in the game. And the race was on to see which one of these shortcuts would be done first. But amidst the hype around all the shortcut ideas, one player would first set a new normal way world record. And you might have heard of him before. It was none other than Pablo GD, who in January of 2015 drove a 4232 on the track, beating Marvin by 16 hundredths of a second, and racing the bar just a little bit higher for anyone who wanted to beat it. Shortly thereafter, players gathered on community servers to grind TM and race F9 together, both fastest way only members and aspiring shortcut players alike, trying the idea that they deemed the most possible. But after a few days, and then a few weeks, and several months of trying later, nobody had succeeded. Most players had lost interest, but Fast's Way only pushed onward, still believing in their idea. One and a half years would pass, until the summer of 2016, where Nino, the team's leader, decided that enough was enough. He wanted to see the shortcut done once and for all, so he opened a public server and put up a huge prize pool of the in-game currency coppers to whoever managed to set a new world record with a shortcut. Nino's online server had just one rule, and it was that driving the normal way was forbidden. If you finished a run the normal way, you would be permanently banned from the server, but apart from that, you were free to shortcut the track however you'd like. The community gathered on Nino's server to try to once and for all break the record. And on the third day of the project, perhaps surprisingly, it was Pablo GD who got this run. A 4176, beating his own world record by over half a second. Finally, at long last, a shortcut had been proven to be possible on F9. And though the group had finally succeeded, they weren't done yet. Pablo GD's success with the Orsh Jump inspired many to try Nino's airship Nosebug, and be the first person to set a world record with it. But because Pablo had gotten a great time with the Orsh Jump, the margin for error was much slimmer. At this point, it was no longer enough to beat the normal way record of 4232. You had to go up against 4176, which would prove to be a tall order. The players grinding the airship shortcut eventually got many runs faster than the normal way record, but no one managed to beat Pablo. They knew that all that was missing was one clean landing after the nose bug, and the record would be set in stone. But somehow it just didn't happen. The airship nose bug tended to produce really awkward landing angles, and no one at the time managed to get it clean enough to beat 4176. It would take another 9 months of tireless grinding by the shortcut players, until finally, on the 18th of March 2017, Reiso got this run.
4135, a new world record with the airship Nosebug. With this run, Raso could well deservedly join fastest way only, after pulling off one of the most difficult shortcuts in the history of the game. This run was the end result of over two years of trying by multiple players. Out of the thousands of attempts players had poured at the shortcut, this was the one majestic flight that cut straight across F9 and landed cleanly on the other side, saving 4 tenths of a second. To most players, this was it, the ultimate F9 record. Perhaps there was still a little bit of room for improvement by executing the bug more cleanly, but the consensus at the time was that nobody bothered to try it, because it had taken so long to be done for the first time. One year later, near the end of 2018, Fastest Way only members ranked the top 50 shortcuts the team had ever done, and the members ranked Razo's F9 record as second place on the list. It was a monumental record, and nobody wanted to go up against it. Except for Razo himself. Razo enjoyed playing the map, and he knew that there was still a little bit of time to be saved. So only a few days after the top 50 records list was published, Razo was playing the map, and incredibly enough, he managed to improve his own world record again, down to a 41-15. In his new world record, Razo got a nose bug that landed much closer to the finish, and he saved 20 hundredths of a second. Razo was just on another level on TM and Race F9. He had now done the Nino airship shortcut twice, before any other player could even do it once. TM and Race F9 had now been completely destroyed by two big shortcuts, and for a long time it seemed like that was that. But as more time passed, some players started re-examining the third shortcut idea on F9, the error wall climb. What if players in the past were too quick to disregard it as impossible? In 2020, the two Korean players Hardtack and Twins decided to try the error wall climb, to see if there was any way to make it possible. The first thing they did was modify the track, to remove the booster completely, and try to figure out if they could reach the finish. And just like players before them had discovered, the finish seemed to be just barely out of reach. But then they had a bright idea, because they were trying to wall climb on the TM and Race version of F9. But in the older game, Trackmania Nations Esports World Cup, the car is a little bit lighter than in Nations Forever. And this not only might make the car jump higher, but it would also allow you to climb the wall with more ease. The original F9 leaderboards had basically been untouched for the past 12 years at this point. Marvin had gotten the world record back in 2013, but the game was largely a ghost town, as nobody had computers that ran Windows XP or Windows Vista. The Korean brothers, Hardtack and Twins, didn't have computers that old either, but they thought of something clever, and that is using a virtual machine. Virtual machines make it possible to simulate a version of Windows, inside of Windows. You can effectively run a computer inside of your computer. Early in 2020, Hardtack and Twins managed to launch Trackmania Nations Esports World Cup on a virtual machine running Windows XP. They now had access to the game, which was a golden ticket to joining Fast's Way only, but upon launching the track, they noticed a big problem. The frame rate was horrible. Virtual machines require a very powerful computer to run smoothly, and they could only at best achieve 30 frames per second which made precise tricks such as the anti-booster skip and the wall climb even harder. But despite that, Twins was really motivated to overcome the shortcut. He played the track every day for 7-8 to eight hours, trying countless times to get past the anti-booster without losing speed, just to have one chance at the ending wall climb. As Twins is a keyboard player, it was all the more difficult to do the very quick taps to adjust his line to get past the anti-booster. Any small error would result in speed loss and make it impossible to reach the finish. After 4 days of playing, he'd gotten almost 100 anti-boost skips, but he had yet to get a launch into the finish. All he needed was just that one run where everything worked, and at long last he would be rewarded for his patience, when on the 6th of April 2020, Twins got this run 
on F9. Thirty-nine sixty-three, saving two and a half seconds over the previous world record by Marvin, and also beating the TMN Race F9 record by Reiso by over 1.5 seconds. Twins had just proven the final shortcut idea possible on F9, getting a new world record and successfully joining fastest way only. To most people, the track now seemed complete. It was a perfect story with 3 out of 3 shortcuts being successfully done by the players, due to their determination and their effort. All the shortcuts were unique in their own way, but with the shared goal of pushing the track record closer to perfection. But what more could realistically be done on F9 now? Or perhaps that's the wrong question to ask, because if you only think about what can realistically be done, you won't end up thinking of something extraordinary. All along, the question that players have asked themselves on F9 is what more can unrealistically be done? None of the shortcut ideas were seen as realistic when they were conceived of, but because players tried them regardless, they ended up raising the bar of the competition much higher. In every competition, it always takes someone to challenge what we currently believe is possible to advance us to a new level, and the answer often lies in the unrealistic. The player Ors knew this when he discovered the first shortcut on F9 in 2014, and six years later, he returned to the track, with an even crazier idea. On the 20th of May 2020, Ors got this run on TMN Race F9. What Ors had discovered is that it's possible to do a trick called the Uber Bug. Landing sideways and drifting in Trackmania will let you do a trick called the Bug Slide, which is a very powerful drift with a lot of grip. If you'll remember, it was also used on the landing in Ors' original shortcut jump from 2014. If you bug slide and crash into a wall in Trackmania, it has some strange properties, where for whatever reason, the game miscalculates your speed, and you can gain speed from the crash, which in some cases will send you flying. This is what's known as a Uber bug, and though the reason for why it happens isn't quite understood yet, it's what sent Ors flying across the map and onto the finish road. The one problem with Uber bugs is that they are completely uncontrollable. The game can really launch you into any direction, and since you have no air control in Trackmania, you just have to hope to get sent towards where you want to go. In his own words, Ors managed to get the flight to the finish road on his 10th Uberbug. Overall, this was an incredible breakthrough on F9. A ramp flip into a sideways landing in order to bug slide into a Uberbug 
to make a Formula race car fly across the map. Absolutely stunning. Boris had raced the bar, and this was the new level of competition speedrunning was brought to on F9. This new shortcut beautifully coincided with another breakthrough in the Trackmania community, when just a few days later, the player Stingler developed a patch that made Trackmania Nation's Esports World Cup work on Windows 7, 8, and 10. Thanks to him and his work, a game that had been almost unplayable for the past decade now had its doors wide open, and players rushed in to break any world records they could. Urs decided to give his shortcut idea a shot on the original F9, and after playing the track for 20 hours, he got this run. Thirty-eight eighty-two, beating Twins by 0.8 seconds, and achieving the world record on both versions of the track. The fact that there was no airship on the original track made things a bit easier, as it wouldn't be blocking your flight towards the finish. And though Ors now had achieved both world records, the trajectories and the landings left some room for improvement, and a little bit more to be desired. Whenever there's a Uberbug shortcut on a Trackmania map, Players often dream of the perfect Uber, just a launch up into the sky and dropping directly into the finish. Across such a long distance, the chance to get sent perfectly into the finish is incredibly small, but on F9, some players were determined to beat the odds. Throughout the tail end of 2020, the player Monster was grinding TM and race F9, chasing the perfect Uber bug. And on the 7th of January 2021, Monster got this run. Thirty-seven forty-nine, improving the world record by 2.3 seconds, and almost soaring directly into the finish. On the original F9, Hardtack was also grinding the Uberbug, and on the 30th of July 2021, Hardtack got this run. Thirty-seven thirty-two which brought the world records on F9 to where they stand as of today. In theory, there's still a few more seconds to be gained on both versions, with a lower trajectory into the finishes. But when looking back through the track's history, it's crazy to think that all these shortcuts existed on the same 40 second long Trackmania track, and that in just 7 years, players have mastered all of them. And for all we know, perhaps there's an even faster shortcut out there. But for that, I guess we will just have to wait and see. F9 as it stands is already one of Trackmania's most shortcut tracks, and a pristine example of how far thinking outside the box will get you, and I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about its world record history. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please consider subscribing to the channel so you never miss when I upload new content. Also a big thank you to my patrons for directly supporting my work. I really appreciate all of your generosity. If you'd like to become a patron, there's a link in the description below. But that's all for now, I will see you all in the next video, and until then, have a good one.